Hi, my name is Ginny and I am going to be doing a little arm paint tutorial for you today. So before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about paints. So the paints that I'm using today are called Tag. When you pick out paints, make sure that they are always water-based. Never use an acrylic-based paint on skin because you can get terrible reactions, you can get burns. So make sure that you're using a professional quality. Other brands are Snazaru, uh, Wolf Brothers. Just make sure that you are not using anything that has oil-based or acrylic in it. So these are all water-based paints. There's different kinds. You can get the solid colors. You can get, most of the brands do have something like this. This is called a split cake where there'll be two colors. You can get different effects. And then you can get cakes like this that are called one stroke. So one stroke cakes are where you can pick up a bunch of colors with a brush or a sponge at one time. Now I'm going to just briefly explain brushes before we get started into the design so you understand them. The first brush I'm going to show you is a filbert. So a filbert brush is one that's flat on one side and rounded on the other. This is really good for making flower petals or anything that you want round, especially any design that you want to start round and thicker to go to thin. So with a filbert, if you put the brush flat like this, you'll get a a thick line and it'll be rounded at the top and as you move your brush down if you twist it it can get thinner and right to a point so I'm just gonna go over that again so you can see that a little bit better so you start flat with pressure and as you slide the brush down you start to pivot it and lift up on the pressure and you can get a nice teardrop shape just like that the next brush I'm going to touch on is an angled brush. An angled brush is angled and it's flat on one side. You can get a very similar effect as you do with the filbert, but it will be flat. If you were just to go straight again, straight down, it gives you more of that sharp edge and you can still pivot and let up pressure to get from thick to thin. And if you wanted to get more of a teardrop, you would start with the brush straight up and down. I'm going to go now to the left and put a bit more pressure and then let up and come more into a straight up position. And you see that I have a half a teardrop shape there. So I'm going to do the same thing going to the right now. I start straight up. I'm putting pressure on the brush. As I come down, I'm tilting it back into a straight up position and releasing the pressure to get to a, a sharp point at the bottom. The next brush I'm going to touch on is a round. So rounds can go anywhere from a size 1 to a size 12. Size 12 is the thicker brush. Numbers, the smaller the numbers, always the smaller the brush. The higher the number, the bigger the brush. So this is a number 12 round. So I'm just going to put some red on here. Anytime that you want to do any fine lines, you're going to be using a round. If you spin the tip before you lift it off, it will have a sharper point to start. And whenever you're doing any kind of a swirly design, rounds are your go-to brush. And when to make it look more dimensional, whenever you're doing a swirly design, we're going to be doing vines, you want to go from thin to thick to thin. And to do that, you're going to start off with just using the point. If you notice for me, I use my pinky to help guide my hand. So I'm going to start off straight up and down with very little pressure. And I'm going to come around this curve. As I'm going around the curve, I'm going to start putting pressure on the brush to make it thicker. And as I come back around, I'm going to start letting up and almost flicking the brush. I didn't quit, quite put enough paint on there, so I'm just going to go over it one more time. So it looks a little bit darker. So thin, straight up and down. As I go around, I'm putting pressure down, flattening that brush a little bit. So I'm coming around, I'm lifting it back up and almost flicking it. So you've got the thin to the thicker to the thin. The other brush that you can get, which we won't really be using today, is a flat brush. So a flat brush is just completely flat on one end and it's thin. So those are the brushes, now we'll get into the design. 
All right, so now we're gonna get into the design. And just remember when you're playing around with paints, practice, practice, practice. Any form of art, there's no right or wrong. Art is art, so whatever you do will be wonderful. And I'm just gonna quickly show you design. You can change it, edit it, play with it, and make it your own. So for, for ease of giving you an idea of different kinds of flowers, the first flower I'm gonna make is using a filbert brush. So I'm grabbing, you have to go back and forth in the same direction to gather up lots of that paint. And so I'm gonna do the same kind of idea what I showed you earlier. I'm just pressing down, lifting and almost flicking. When I'm actually doing designs, for real, I usually will stick to one type of flower design. But to give you an idea of the different effects, we're gonna just do a couple different flowers. So this one's gonna be the filbert flower. So again, I'm pressing down full ways as I'm, lift, as I'm going toward the center of the flower, I'm lifting. So we're gonna do one more right here. And that gives you a really pretty flower design with lots of colors. And just to give you a different idea, so this one I'm using the purple and blue one stroke. And this time I'm using my angled brush. And I'm gonna rub it back and forth, the same direction, and really load up that brush. Now when you're loading up your brush, if the brush is really wet, as soon as you go to paint it, it's gonna get drippy lines, and it's gonna mess everything up. So you want your brush damp, but not really wet. And if it's too dry, you'll feel like it's pulling. So when you're painting, you want the paint to just kinda of glide. Okay, so now I'm gonna do an, just another flower here. So I'm gonna start again, straight up and down. I'm gonna put pressure as I go down to the right and back up. Now I'm gonna do the left side. So now we have one flower, one flower petal. So we're just gonna do this again. You can make three petaled flowers. I usually make five but you can do four. Again, straight up and down, I'm angling, putting pressure, and then, and there we go. So when I'm using this one for these kind of flowers, I usually just like to pull down in the middle, just to give it a little bit of effect there. Perfect. And the same thing when it comes to making leaves around the flowers. For this one, I'm going to use I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking my filbert, I'm running it between the two greens to pick up a little bit of both greens. The same idea with the flower petals, I'm just pressing down and then real quickly flicking up so that you're getting this little teardrop shape on these leaves. We'll do one here. And on the bottom flower, where I used my angled brush, I will go back to the angled brush to show you leaves with an angled brush. So again, I'm running it between the dark and light green to pick up both colors. The same idea that I'm starting straight up and down, I'm putting some pressure. When you're using an angled brush, you can see that you can get a lot more shape and a lot more angle a lot more control in the shape of the leaves. But again, it's just what you like and what you prefer. So play around, figure out what you're comfortable with, what design you think looks best. And just remember, every time you paint, it's always gonna be different. So now I'm gonna quickly show you Uh, something else, I'm gonna quickly just make a dragonfly for in the middle of our design. So I'm using the filbert to start. So I want these round here. So for my dragonfly, again, you play around, figure out what you like. I start off with almost a heart shape at the top and then I do lines going down. Then I'm gonna come in with a round and I'm gonna take complementary color. 
Let's say orange. Load up, always load up your brush well. That's the key. So now we've got the body, and now we're gonna do some wings real quick. For the wings, I'm using my filbert again because I want nice rounded wings. There's one wing. We're gonna come make the second wing. We're gonna go on this side, a bigger wing. So there we go, we've got wings. Now we need to start connecting this and bringing it all together. So we're gonna go to our, our round. This is a thinner round. This is about a number three. And you can do just one green. I still like even with my round, you're not gonna really see the dark and light green so much separated, but I like that it gives it more depth. So again, I'm starting thin. I'm gonna go thick to thin. And then we'll put another vine out this way. And every time you paint is gonna be something different, right? So, I'll make this vine kind of coming and peeking out around the dragonfly. I'll do some more vines coming up this way. So again, you can see how it's going from thin to thick to thin. And we'll just do another one coming off of here. There we go. So now we've got the outline. Now it's time to put some highlights in there. So highlights, Usually you want to use the white or the black. So I'm going to, for this one, I'm just going to put, if you have little stick on gems, they look really great in the center of flowers. I'm keeping it simple. And the nice thing about the rounds is you can get these little dots. So I'm making little baby breath. Sometimes just these little details are quick and easy that they can add a whole lot to the overall look. Peeking out over here, a little bit here, a little bit here. Again, it's just playing around. Every time you paint, it'll be a little bit different. There we go. So we've thrown some baby breath in there. I think what I'm going to do just to lighten up this flower, I'm just going to use my round brush to flick in some lines there. Now we still have the dragonflies wings to deal with. So we're just going to use some black, again a round brush, because I want the fine lines. I'm just going to outline his wings here. Just outlining. Again, I'm putting very little pressure and when you want a uh, thin line, you want to keep the brush mostly up and down. So you can see how the brush is vertical there. Just add some highlights. I'm going to quickly outline. I'm just going to add a few more white highlights. When you add a white line along a dark line, it brings it out. So I'm just putting some white highlights along the black. So now we have a very basic flower design. If you want to get more details, you could like outline this flower with black on one side, white on the other. You can get as detailed as you wanted. We just wanted to keep something simple. And if you had glitter, a trick to using glitter is you just get a little bit of moisture on the end of a paintbrush. Again, when you're using glitter, make sure you never, ever, ever use any glitter unless it is designed for, for skin. So you can use any form of makeup glitter. This is actually body art glitter, but uh, you can get glitter from the cosmetic section. You just don't want to use glitter unless it's designed for your skin because you can get harmful metals and stuff in there. So I'm just sticking the paintbrush into the glitter. 
I'm just rolling it along. And there you go. And when it comes to wash it off, the only thing you need, just soap and water. Again, when you're using water-based soap and water, it comes off very easily. Um, you can use a baby wipe, you can use a makeup wipe, any of those things. So it comes off very easy, it won't stain your skin if you're using uh, an actual body, water-based body paint product. So there you go.